Good morning, everyone, and welcome to 2024's first Triangular Talk session. My name is Shira Kalyan, and I'm the CEO of Agora Math Circle. I hope you guys had a great start to the year, and I hope that keeps going for the months to come. Triangular Talks is a forum for students to interact with and hear directly from industry executives across various companies and organizations about how they use STEM concepts and problem-solving skills in their day-to-day -day work lives. Triangular Talks will be a series of one-hour online Zoom sessions consisting of three parts, an introduction, a presentation, and a Q&A session. These talks will revolve around one central idea, the triangular method for solving problems. This method begins with a problem. From that, one gets innovation, which one will finally use to solve the problem. To help students connect the dots between classes and real life, speakers will be asked what they do every day and how they apply their knowledge in STEM and problem solving. This will introduce students to different industries and motivate them to nurture their problems solving skills and not give up. The most common question asked by students in any math class is, why are we learning this? Or when will we ever use it? This program will answer these questions and encourage students to take the initiative to learn and do more. Before we get into our speaker's introduction, I'd like to ask you guys to do something. Think about the last time you were on a road or freeway. It was probably very recent. I mean, you guys go to school using a road and your parents probably go to work using a road. Everything you use, you used to travel with is on a road. What about the last time you went over a bridge or under a tunnel? What about an airport? Well, these are some of the very, very many examples of how the work of civil engineers is all around us. Speaking of civil engineers, today we're joined by Ms. Charmaine Yambao. She is a seasoned civil, senior civil engineer with 25 plus years of experience in municipal utilities and civil engineering. Currently holding the position of Senior Civil Engineer at the City of Agora Hills, she has made significant contributions to the city's infrastructure, including being on the Annenberg Wildlife Crossing Project since nearly the beginning. Prior to her role in Agora Hills, Charmaine served as a Utilities Engineer for the City of Santa Monica and as an Associate Engineer for the City of Santa Paula. Charmaine earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering from UC Davis laying a strong foundation for a successful career in sustainable infrastructure development. Please welcome Ms. Char Charmaine Yambao to talk about the Lady Face Greenway Project. Wow, that is a really nice introduction. Thank you, Surya, for that generous one. Um, again, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Charmaine Yambao, professional civil engineer, and I'm honored to be your speaker today. I would like to note I'm doubly honored because um, this month we're celebrating on February 11th, International Day of Women's Girls and of Women and Girls in Science. So it's a globally internationally um, day, um, and it's uh, promoting equality in science for both women and and men. Um, before we begin, I do want to sit, let this group know that I'm really impressed that kids your age are willing to wake up this early on a Saturday to attend a presentation like this about civil engineering um, and that they're even thinking, and number two, that they're even thinking about what to do with STEM concepts in your everyday lives. Um, so again, I wanna thank you for your time and interest. Um, let me get my presentation up. And Can you see this, Syria? Not yet. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me let me escape. Uh, I need to share my screen. <laughs> I can see it now. Okay. Can you see that now? Okay. okay, just a quick, um, I'll start out with a quick overview of what we'll be presenting today, and I'll start by telling you a little about me, the pathway I chose to get where I am today, and what my idea of what an engineer is, um, and then I'll get right into what I'm, th actually, I'm very thrilled to present to you my latest project, which is called the Lady, Fa Green Lady Face Greenway Project. And um, then I'll move into, and I will start with a quote by Steve Jobs, great things in business are never done by one person, and they're done by a team of people. Spend time on that team that make this project a reality. So that's my acknowledgement section. I do want to get into like teamwork. 
um, and then get into about time. Um, parting words of wisdom is what that's about. And then I'll open up the floor for Q and A. Uh, so if you want to hold until then, that's great. But you know, I get it. Sometimes you don't want to. You have something on your mind, and you're more than welcome to um, ask the question. But I do hope that you can kind of keep that to the Q and A time. Okay. okay. So about me. So who am I? Well, you already know that my name is Charmaine Yandel. Um, and you've read about my bio and heard it from Syria, um, but I work as a civil engineer. But from this slide, I'm hoping to show you that my profession is just a part of who I am and not my whole person. And to know the whole me, I want to give you insight on what motivates me, my strengths and passion and what makes me tick, which plays a role into what I do in my career. Um, first off, I'm a mother uh, to two wonderful human beings and one fur baby. Um, You'll see in the middle slide that those are me and my kids and my wonderful fur baby on the bottom there in the center and um, and a wife. That's my husband. Picture on the left side is me and my husband about 26 years ago when we married. And I'm a first generation Filipino American from a very large family. In fact, I'm at my mom's house right now in San Diego um, and uh, I spend a lot of time with them. Um, I'm also an avid runner. I've, I do run a lot. I finished 15 marathons, triathlons, et cetera. Definitely keeps me, my body and mind in shape. I know somebody here is from Chicago. I've run the Chicago marathon twice. Um, I'm a hiker. I also board and um, I enjoy traveling. I love going to national parks. I like to tick that off my list. I'm a food and wine enthusiast. And recently I've been able to share my love of traveling with my parents um, taking them recently to Italy and to Yosemite. And those are the two slides on the right side. You can see on the top is Yosemite. I was able to take my parents with my most of my family. It's fairly large. Um, and on the bottom, we got to take her to Italy, and that's the Coliseum. Okay. Um, all right. This is my career pathway. Um, I know you're all part, you were probably all once a part of the Gore Math Circle, which I is a fantastic first step in finding your pathway to college and success beyond. Um, when I first put this slide together, I thought, oh my God, this is such a mess. But I ended up keeping it because it adequately shows um, you guys my serpentine pathway to where I am today in my career. I'd like to say that um, I'd love to be able to tell you guys that I always knew that I wanted to be an engineer. But that's not the case. As, um, and one of the things I mentioned earlier was International Women and Girls Day in Science. So back in my time when I was your age, there were not as many role models that were female. Um, so math and science, although I excelled at that from a very young age and I love playing with things that like tinker toys, toys you probably don't remember. Maybe you definitely know Legos, Etch-a-Sketch. Etch those are things I loved. And etch a sketch in case you don't know, you probably maybe know from Toy Story. It's kind of like a, not like a computer, but that's because we didn't have computers or smartphones back then. Um, and that, believe it or not, was probably the basis of like a CAD, which is a program that many engineers use to, um, to show their designs. But even with that base, I still, and what I really wanted to be was an artist that lived in New York City. I know, crazy, right? Um, I got really lucky one summer when my godmother invited me to stay with her in New York City. And she's a, actually a successful architect that specializes in historic preservation and has always been a role model for me. But that summer I was able to, she actually put me in touch with a lot of like architects and engineers on projects that she was working on. And that's when I started to think, oh, I could probably be an engineer. I like what they're doing. They're designing these buildings or designing these roads they're designing bridges because in New York they have a lot of bridges. Um, from there, I went to the University of California, Davis, and at that time, um, I thought, okay, engineering's in mine. I'm going, I had really had no specific major, um, but I did go into engineering, and that, and the emphasis that I chose was environmental, so it's like I went from bridges to environment. It, I was all crazy, but it was all about exploration, depending on what was of interest in me at time. And if you guys ever get an opportunity to go to Davis, it has a very big environmental um, um, community there. So 
in this area of Davis, this is when I became this once urban girl from San Diego to more of an outdoor um, enthusiast um, because Tahoe and Yosemite is near there. I, I thrived and I developed at the university. I joined the Filipino um, Engineering Association um, and just really enjoyed being in a town that was so different from San Diego where you rode your bikes everywhere. So from there, I graduated, of course, and that was back in 1991. Um, so I jumped into my career, but you'll notice from 91 to 92 is a little bit of a gap. I did go traveling a little bit, discovered um, different places. And but during the 1992, 2003 time in my period, that's like the basis of my career. I started working for a number of different um, engineering groups. So civil engineering, as, um, as you know, it it has different factions. It can go from civil is very broad. You have structural, you have environmental, you have hydrology, you have hydraulics. It, it covers a lot of ground that, um, as Syria mentioned, is are things that people use in their everyday lives, roadways, and slope stable, it, things like that. So my first job really was with a group of um, geotechnical people and they, and geotechnical works with dirt. I soon discovered that wasn't for me. And eventually I started working for my first city and it was a small city of Santa Paula. It's in Ventura County here in California. And this gave me a preview of civil engineering at its finest. Because it was small, I got to work in all different aspects of engineering, roadway, sewer, wastewater, solid waste, et cetera. And um, again, I gravitated towards the environmental side of civil engineering and worked primarily on wastewater projects, solid waste management, and potable water. These are all areas of civil engineering with an environmental emphasis. Um, and I really enjoyed working with what they call water engineering, which in the industry is called liquid gold. As you know, with our weather and everything, um, water becomes very important if they talk about drought. And I concentrated on that um, as I moved on in my career and started working for the city of Santa Monica as their utilities engineer. I worked on a lot of um, large projects that dealt with contamination of their groundwater from MTBE, which is a chemical that would that entered their water system from leaking underground tanks from gas stations. And um, that's also the time when I worked with a lot of lawyers because there was a lot of um, lawsuits and everything. Um, that was a lot of a lot of time in in courts, but it was very interesting because that's where you learn about like the gold water, where it, it breaches not just in engineering but in um, all kinds of terms of um, science. How do you clean things up? So. As I was diving into the meat of my career of, of water engineering, um, my career took another pathway. And as it turns out, I became a mom to first to Ronan and then to Bibi. This is hands down my absolute favorite job of my life. And um, discovered during this time, I needed to take time off from work and spent time playing again with Legos and Thomas the Train, still building, still engineering. And as my children moved into school age, I was able to reach out to my associate, associates and find work as a consultant. So as they were growing, I was growing, um, trying to figure out like what to do with raising children and still keeping my career um, moving forward. And as luck would have it, one of my associates worked for the city of Agora Hills. And at first I worked as a consultant for them. And it was during this time that they started to look for a full-time employee. And I honestly felt like I was the, like the late Kobe Bryant. I was being courted by the city and I was able to call my own shots. And so for the last 15 years, I've worked with them and on some amazing projects um, that I've been able to create and build for the citizens of the city of Fort Hills and for residents adjacent to that. So now that I've been able to give you a little bit of my background, I want to get into what you guys might know what an engineer is. So what is exactly an engineer? When I first started my career, when I told someone I was an engineer, the most common thing I heard was, oh, so you work on trains. But no, no, I don't work on trains 
or, oh, you're just one of those big nerds. Well, probably, <laughs> I'm probably a big nerd, but I didn't see that as a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I do like math. I do like science, but as an engineer, I felt like, mm, it, it, it's, yes, I like to design. Some engineers do work on trains, but I like to create. And um, it's a big thing I want to tell people that are into um, STEM, moving into a career or anything beyond that, because there's a lot of creativity in engineering. It's actually, I feel, one of the essential elements. Um, and I know being, you know, you're like waiting, wait, wait, what about mathematics? Um, absolutely important. Um Maybe not the same way mathematics, it might be as for science, but for engineers, mathematics is a tool. It's a tool to create, it's a tool to design, it's a tool to plan, it's a tool to construct. Engine engineers design things, but in real life, as I'm going to probably show you in later in the slides, is that engineers, probably about a third of them, really work on designing. Um, a third of them work on planning it. And a third of them probably work on selling or constructing and testing it. But the common thread for all parts of it is the creativity and how they do their work. So I do want to make sure that you understand that, you know, mathematics, absolutely important. But I do feel that in order to design and create design, there's creativity behind it. And specific to civil engineering, I do want to say that the word civil is very important. I'm an engineer for the people. I create roadways, I create bridges, I create water systems, all of that serve and provide for the betterment of my community. And I found, you know, during my time, especially even when I was with my kids as a stay at home mom, that I really thrived in working for my community. And what better way, but as a civil engineer. Okay. So now I guess enough about me and lecturing and all that. So I'm going to get into some of the good stuff. And I'm really thrilled to give you a presentation on a project that I feel will transform our community of City of Aurora Hills and for the adjacent communities as well. And that's the Lady Face Greenway project. Um, this is a perfect project to present. I, I actually thought that this was mo mostly Agora community. And I chose it because I thought most of you were here, but it's not the case. But um, if you do live in this area, you are all old enough um, to know and probably remember what this project area is today, which I'm going to show you in the next slide, and what it will become in the near future. So I was kind of excited because it's gone through design. It's now ready for construction. Okay. So why did the city undertake this Lady Face Greenway project? Um, this slide shows you um, what in science we call the problem. Um, and, you know, the scientific method in a most simplistic way is you want to ask what the problem is, how do you fix the problem, and and what is the solution? Um, working for a government agency, um, regulations um, is what I call problems. They often govern down to the cities um, from the federal and state government what what we need to do or what we have to provide to the community, what we have to fix. So these are the areas from the state and federal government that have put on cities on regulating. They are water quality, active transportation, and urban greening. So real quick, water quality in the state of California in 20, 2012, um, they, the Los Angeles County adopted what they called MS4 permits. These are... Um, meant to improve the water quality of our storm drain system. And it put that squarely on the cities and counties backs. Um, and that's what they call sustainability. Like how, how do you clean up the water so that we keep our environment clean? So it's a good thing, right? Then there's active transportation. So this came about because everybody wants to get away from pollution, car pollution, and increase, you know, different types of transportation modes instead of the car. That, that involves pedestrian safety, providing sidewalks, connectivity, and connecting um, work and school with ways to get to it other than a car, like bikes. So that's what increasing alternative modes of transportation. And then the other one that they put in is what they call urban greening. 
And that's about reestablishing our local ecosystem, putting in more trees. And in the state of California, they call it the Climate Action and Adaption Plan. And in the city of Aurora Hills, we've actually adopted one, which, um, as you'll see in this project, helps us meet some of these goals. And once we've identified these areas, um, the city had to find solutions. And one of the things about cities is that they don't have a lot of money for projects like this. So we had to actively look for grant monies to help design a project that would meet um, any of these three areas. And one that came about was one that met would help us meet our water quality requirements. So we applied for that grant and we received money to start design on a project. And here's the project locations. We identified a project um, that you'll know is located here in the city of Gore Hills. It will be constructed over an existing rectangular concrete line channel that's actually owned by the county of Los Angeles. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. It's right here. It's the crosses of Cornell and Agora. And the city discovered that we could possibly use this area to help treat the water that you see here to, to clean it up. So after we identified our project location, we needed to start the process. Um, this slide here kind of shows you a, a basic pro uh, project development through a, a government agency. Um, I will tell you, I would make a note that most projects can take up to 10 years. It's, it's as they say, it's government takes forever, right? There's a lot of red tape. Um, but in this case, this is a project that I worked on that was the fastest I've ever gotten through permitting and to construction. It started in 2019 as a concept, told you about what we were trying to do uh, meet water quality, transportation, um, expanding our green space. Um, and then in 2019, we awarded our design contract um, to figure out like, well, what are we gonna do here? We, we knew that we wanted to create a green space, but how could we put in water quality elements? And then in 2020, we started, um, as a city, you have to get public involvement. So we had to start reaching out to the, um, to the public. But at the same time, we had to start the permitting process. So we had to reach out to LA County. As I mentioned, um, the land that we wanted to use was owned by someone else. So we had to get approval to get um, to be able to use that land and get the right to use it. And then in 2021, um, after getting the approval from the county, we started developing our concept into a design project. And that incorporated our water quality features, which I'll highlight in the next few slides. And then we continued our applications for funding. As I mentioned, we got funding for design, but that was it. We knew that if we wanted to make this project a reality, we had to start looking for money in other areas, other, other grants, other funding pots. So as we designed, um, we in the city, you have to go through what we call a uh, 50% and 90% um, review period. Um, in the meantime, we still kept on looking for money and we ended up being awarded um, $6 million um, from the state of California for construction of this project. And this was more for the, and this is interesting, this was for the element of the greening space. So now we've got another part because we, we continue to look for all three areas. So we had some for water quality, now we had for the greening. And then we, we were able to secure in 2023, just last year, funding from our local group, um, Measure R and Measure M funds for active transportation. And at the same time, because this project had so many elements in it, we were able to secure our permits. And here we are today in 2024, ready to construct it. Okay, so this is the site. So if you were to drive out to the project site right now, this is what you would see. Yeah, it's kind of it's really like nothing. It's kind of an ugly area. You know, the city really wanted to not only clean up the water, uh, provide green space, provide active transportation, but we also wanted to clean up this area, make it better. Um, so 
it, if you live in Agora, this is what it looks like today, today. And I'm excited that you can see this because in a couple years, you'll see something totally different. Oh, thank you. Um, oops, let me go back. I, go back. I wanted to show you a couple things too here. You'll notice, oops. Um, there's a grade differential. You'll see, you know, as part of active trans transportation, we also want to make it as an even spot for people to walk. So there's not, you know, so it, it meets um, ADA requirements, which is for people with disabilities. So that was a, a, a part. These are all the challenges we face. You have a roadway here. You have a grade differential. You also have buildings that we have to protect. We can't impact them. And we have this pump station here. So it's all these things we had to deal with. And of course, we have this channel. So to create this green way, here's some creativity that we had to get with. Um, we had to address the grade transitions. So to do that, we created what they call bioswales. So those are these little things. Played, we, we worked with what those grades, the grade differentials were to be able to cap this project. And I'm sorry, you know what? I missed, I, I made an important, I didn't get to tell you the important part of it all. The Lady Face Greenway involves capping this, capping this guy. So, and what I mean by capping, it means covering it. We're, co we're building basically a bridge over this channel and then creating a greenway. So when you do that, you raise the grade, but we did work with what we had and created these bioswales. And bioswales are what we use to clean up the water that goes into the flood channel. And cleaning up that water helps meet us meet our water quality requirements. So that's, that's area one. And capping, keeping this, this nice flat space, creating a bridge over this, gets us what we need for active transportation. So you see the pedestrian pathways. We even have an equestrian pathway. And we get to keep the trees that are existing there too as well. Another part of our creativity on this project is we, in the previous slide I showed you, there was a building there. So we don't want to affect that building. So one of the um, challenges was how do we protect it? But how do we also not make something that people don't want to see, like a block wall? We don't want to create something that is, you know, uglier than it already is. So we decided and kind of came up with what we call buried retaining walls. So we bury the walls and we can still build up to it and still protect the building here. There's a hand. You have a question? Serious, I answer the question now or later? Um, the other thing that we had to do for creativity was um, the city council who governs the city of Agora Hills wanted us to make sure that we um, connect to the existing um, businesses there to have them be able to have easy access to it and not create a barrier. Um, and that was difficult because as you raise, build a bridge over a channel and then you have all these grade transitions, how do you work with something that's existing? So again, we created more bioswells and you'll see we created um, little bridge pathways that go over into these existing businesses and provides them an access to the Greenway. So those are some of the creative parts of uh, the Lady Face Greenway. And I wanted to also touch on other aspects of the project that met our water quality and our cap features, our greening features. Um, 85 to 90% of the material we're gonna use is natural planting material through the Greenway. 
We also have several water treatment areas. One of them I mentioned was the bioswales. Um, they'll treat about uh, 1,100 cubic um, feet of water. We also have we, what we call vegetated filter strips. They're in this area right here that will treat off-site runoff and treat it before it goes into the storm drain system. We also have what we call modular wetlands. It's going to treat, and I've highlighted this because I want to get into that too as well, um, treating off-site flooding that was happening at a local intersection right next to the project. Mentioned the pedestrian bridges over the bioswells that provide um, active transportation and connectivity, as well as trees. We added trees um, for shading, and that met our greening requirements. So if you go back a slide, I have this highlighted this modular wetland because we had some flooding issues. So one of the exciting things about this project, I was able to connect another problem that the city had, but had been unable to um, find funding to help rehabilitate it. There's an, uh, oops, sorry. There's an area adjacent to the project um, area that's called, um, it's an intersection and it's Agora and Lady Face, which is here. So if you, a while back we had a fire, it was called the Woolsey Fire, which it was horrible, it decimated homes, everything, but it also took away all the greenings on the slopes that you see here. And as of course, what happened with any kind of emergency Right after the Woolsey fire, we had storms and they were large enough that they created mudslides. And this is an area that had a lot of issues to begin with, with during rain events would flood. So often the city would put in um, what they call um, sandbags and they would hold the water back in this area here. So we would have to do this year after year after year. We kind of had some solutions to it, but never any funding until this project came. And because the project was right next to it, we were able to include this problem area with our Lady Face Greenway, which involved, as you'll see here, we designed um, a catch basin, which captures the water and takes it into that channel that we're covering but also takes it, takes the water here. So this goes here into this manhole and it gets, there's a weir that we put in there and the weir takes some of that water and puts it into what I call these modular wetlands. So it's, it kind of creates this little water feature, but also feeds it into these plants that clean the water that comes from this area, it's all muddy, and then puts it back all cleaned into the storm drain system that carries it out to the oceans. So it was a wonderful opportunity. It was a creative opportunity to recognize something that needed attention and was it, and we were able to include it in a project that already had all this funding to construct. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of that project. I wanted to now get into what this project will look like at the end. So the Lady Face Greenway, they used to call it a park, but we don't call it a park anymore. It's, it's for reasons of it's adjacent to an area that serves alcohol. So we can't really permit a park. So it's more what they call a greenway. So it's like a, a pass through area that has a lot of plants, areas that you can stop to kind of, you know, take a break when you're doing your walk, your active transportation. But anyway, here it is. It's it's a relatively small area. It's about 700 linear feet from one roadway to the next. It's also an area that the city has identified as a affordable housing area. So there'll be affordable housing on this area and over here to the south. And it's also uh, a location that doesn't currently have any green space um, most of the green space in, and when I say green space park, although we don't call it a park, is north of here. So this would be one of the first ones in this area. Um, and it would serve what we call our new affordable housing. 
here is um, I like to highlight one of the so some of the funding that we received was active transportation. Like I mentioned, we're creating active transportation not for just for pedestrians, but for in Agora Hills we have a big equestrian community. So this area actually encompasses what they call an equestrian path. So in the red we continue that pathway. So there's equestrians that come here and then it continues on on past Cornell and into uh, another equestrian path. We also have a pedestrian pathway, which is here in the blue. Um, Agora Road has no sidewalk. So this creates um, a safe pathway for residents and for any of the community to take when they want to visit um, the businesses just to the north, which is here, and to businesses further this way. We also have what we call a, a bike pathway. We do have a bike pathway on Agora Road, but this is an alternative pathway for those that might have little kids that can safely ride away from the from uh, cars. So. Here's a rendering. If you were to enter the Greenway, and if you remember the first picture I, I showed you with just big dirt, nothing but this big open channel. This is the channel now. We've covered it. And this is what it's going to look like. Here's the equestrian pathway. Here's the pedestrians. And you'll see the trees that we're starting to plant because now we've covered the area. Here's a layout I wanted to show you. Um, we've been able to include butterfly gardens. Um, that's a big thing. I think, I don't know if you guys know about monarch butterflies. Um, they're losing their habitat, habitat. So we're including plants that um, attract these types of um, insects, um, butterflies, bees, the pollinators. And they're kind of strewn along the greenway. Two, I spent a lot of time talking to you about cleaning our um stormwater. These are the bioswells that will run on either side of the greenway, taking advantage of what I call the grade differentials. The modular wetland is actually in this area. And again, where I showed you where they had the mud flow, the that's over here. So it'll, it'll flow in a pipe underground to here and feed the landscaping that we're planting here before it enters into the drainage facility that we've covered below. Um, here is another cut through of the project if you're walking through it. Imagine you're walking through it and this shows you kind of the bioswales again, shows you some of the seeding areas, the new trees that we'll plant because now we've covered the area this is the storm drain that you showed. I showed you in that one picture, the big hole in the ground. Now it's covered. It's covered pretty much what I call a long bridge. Three, we create some seating areas for people to take a break, to have lunch. There's our gathering and seating areas here, taking advantage of the flattened area that we've created. We've also got trees that we're planting in planters that give shade to people in these um, seating areas. We even have a horse hitching um, that kind of plays in part with our active transportation, encouraging equine activity. We'll have a hitching post here in the shade for them, as well as like um, water facilities for them. We also have bike racks here and here, and a bike um, fix-it facility. I'm um, encouraging active transportation again for those that um, cycle, giving them an opportunity to be able to store their bikes, um, fix their bikes if they need to, and um, grab some water. We'll have some water um, facilities there too as well. And I didn't talk much about this, but this has also become with the various different um, um, monies that we've received, 
also an art and educational opportunity. We've got six different locations. In the next year, we're going to go out for a call, what they call for call for artists. And um, it, it's basically a call for proposals on what you would propose to put for an art in this project that has nature inspired. So I'm excited to see who applies for that, what we get from that. And the educational opportunity is, is again, as a civil engineer, I told you I like to work with the um, community. We're working with the Agora Hills High School there. And they're, um, I think it's, I, I forget the name, but it's the public service group there that they've created. And they're going to create a Q, QR code educational um, pathway that talks about the different plants here that we have that is very specific to the indigenous culture that we're here in Agora Hills and what those plants meant to them historically and everything. So we're working with them. We've got our group already um, established and starting from, I think they're groups of sophomores and juniors. So they'll go through the life of the project with us. And here's an example of where this is kind of a somebody put that in there i didn't catch it till now it's a thinker it's actually a real piece of art but this is what we would an installation of the art piece here is the um i wanted to show you um, the planting that we have um, proposed for this project um, we have four different types of trees that are native everything is native and natural to the environment that's that's that kind of meets what we called our um, third one which is our cap creating the green space but we also wanted to create it that it was ecologically appropriate for our area and being in southern california everything is meant to be a southern california native plant so these trees are all native californian southern california as well as the shrubs and low-lying bushes um, the stars denote the ones that are meant to attract um, butterflies and um, bees, the pollinators. And we're also working with the National Wildlife Federation to get it um, uh, certified. Uh, and the National Wildlife Federation, you might have heard, um, they're working on a very big project here in Agora Hills, and it's called the Wildlife Annenberg Wildlife Crossing for the mountain lions. So again, I just wanted to summarize our project benefits. The project the Lady Face Greenway will promote sustainability. It's an active transportation project. It provides health and economic benefits to the community by providing the active transportation. It, it also, we were able to include in honoring indigenous heritage by working with the Agora High School team and it's very community centric. It provides um, what I call a an overall beautification to an area that is just kind of blighted. It, it has nothing there right now to offer um, other than a big channel with a deep hole. <laughs> okay, now I get to the acknowledgements. Um, again, teamwork makes the dream work is what I like to call. There's no way I could have been here talking to you about this project without my wonderful team. Um, we as a city of Agora Hills, we're the lead, what we call the lead agency. We drive this project, but part of our team members is the designers. And I have what we call, we have M6 Consulting. They're the ones that did all the, they're the ones that use the mathematics. They're, they're using the tools that you guys are learning to design and create the project that we developed as a planner. That's kind of what I did for my role. And we just hired um, one of our last members of our team, Berg, um, and they're the construction manager. They're gonna be the one that leads the construction. They'll be working with the contractor, which we haven't selected yet. That's That'll be awarded at the end of this month. Um, and they'll be the ones to spearhead our construction. Um, and a big critical part is our funding. California State Parks, big funder. They gave us $6 million to provide the greenway, the beautifications that you see with the trees and the walkways. Um, Metro is our local agency. They gave quite a bit of money. I want to say, uh, let me think, it's $12 million. 
um, to help construct the bridge over the channel and the pathways that I showed you. And we also have what we call a Las Virginas Malibu Council of Governments. It, they're a regional agency that helps us lobby for monies, funding to help make these kind of projects realities. And we're, we have one person to add to our team, and that'll be the contractor that will construct this project and make it real. So what about time? Um, if I could travel back in time, I also like to want to give words of advice to my teenage self. What would I share? Um, first thing is, I would say you need to stay in touch, stay in touch with family, friends, colleagues. That's what feeds you. That gives you that, that, that comfort, that everything you need. And I have this picture here. I just went on a little cruise with my friends here and these ladies I've known for 40, 50 years. They, they remind me, they're kind of what I call my touchstones of who I was, what I want to be. They give me that reminder. Um, but when I say stay in touch, I mean, stay in touch too with your, co your colleagues, because you never know like what kind of help you might need. Um, most of my jobs that I've, I've been able to work through have been from people, at least letting me, contacting me, people that I worked with, people that I kept in touch with. So very important, stay in touch. Um, another one is explore. I want you guys to explore often. Take the road less travel. Find out, find out what makes you tick, what makes you happy, what makes you unhappy. You know, just go out there. Don't be afraid. You know, it, it could even mean if you don't go to college right away, maybe take a break, take a little breather, but explore. Find out what makes you, because working, working, I'll tell you, is a long time. It's a long, a large part of your life. And so, you want to do what makes you happy. So explore. Find that out. And lastly, it's okay not to know. Um, this is a little group, CCA, that I'm a board member of. And they're great people to ask. If I don't know something, I go and ask them, right? Because they're in my, my field. It's okay not to know. It's okay to fail. It's okay not to know your next step. These are things that part of exploration, but it's also good not to know because you learn from that. You find out, you ask for help. You keep asking these questions. And you guys are all on the first, your great first step because you're doing this triangular talks. Again, I'm really impressed. And I'm very honored to be able to speak to you. So those are my words of advice that I give to myself when I was younger. I, I wish I could travel back in time. I would have told myself that and probably saved me a lot of less worry because you worry a lot. And it's okay. It's okay to do that. It's okay not to know. It's okay to explore. Definitely stay in touch. Those staying in touch is going to keep your mind and your soul very it's happy. Okay, that I have questions and answers. I hope I have enough time. Do I stop sharing, Syria? I think the slide works. Oh, the slide or, works. Okay. I didn't I, think so. It's up to you. I can do that. Mm. Okay. Do I call the people, Siri, or do you? You're welcome to call on them, but while we wait for our students to type out questions, if they have any, I'll go ahead and ask them on my own. So okay. your journey has brought you to many places. So how did you go about finding opportunities or do you have any advice for students who want to get into this field? about the opportunities that might be available uh, for civil engineering well if you're if you're interested in civil engineering in particular a lot of civil engineers do work for local agencies so i encourage you while you're in high school a lot of local agencies have internship programs um for students um, in fact um, in agora hills oftentimes you know these these high school students will come in and we have a good relationship. Many local agencies do, and they'll find a place for you. Could be a summer job, just just to do that and tell them your interest, and they'll often place you in in that group. So if 
so again, civil engineering, you could go into consulting in a private firm, but I always encourage if you're a civil engineer, because you often, even when you work for a consulting firm, you're building projects that serve the city, serve the community. So if you're a high school student, I encourage you to go to your local city, find out what can you do. And they often really, they, they, they welcome that help yeah, and they want to get you involved. Great, thank you. I see that Arya Varden has a question. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, wait, I'm um, did you, you said that you want to be an engineer? Uh, no, you, you, from the beginning, you said that you wanted to be an artist. So, did you want to be an artist in painting and then later get interested in engineering, or did you uh, like engineering from the start? Well, I wanted to be an artist, and I went when I say artist, I wanted to be a painter. Oh. Nothing to do with engineering. That's why I said it's like my career path has been very serpentine. And I do feel like, you know, the the artist in me, it's creative. But again, like I said, I feel like today it's a little different. There's a lot more um, opportunities for kids to see what you can do with STEM. Back then, it really wasn't. And as a female, they didn't have a lot of role models for me. So as a female, you see like teachers, you know, things that that were primarily women, women seen, but not necessarily as an engineer. Even today, I feel like I rarely see it's still in the range of like maybe 20 percent. I see women engineering. I know you're you're a young man, but um, I really I love art. I still do. I still like to create. In fact, my and my family, I have two artists, so it definitely runs in my family. But I was always really good with building. Like I told you, I, I played, those were my favorite toys, like Tinker Toys, uh, Etch-A-Sketch, things like that. It, but I didn't want to, I didn't know what to do with it. Like you're here because you didn't, you want to see what can you do? I didn't know. Nobody even, they didn't have any of this. So that, that was kind of my serpentine career move at, at a very young age. I got, and I actually got very lucky. I have a god, wonderful godmother who is quite successful in New York City, who's an architect, and she worked with a lot of engineers, and she took me out one summer. I had spent a whole summer looking at her projects, talking to engineers, and I discovered, wow, I actually kind of like what they're doing. So that's what got me started. I hope that answered your question. Yes. So I have one last one. Yeah. About the Lady Face Greenway project. I understand about the Greenway part of the Greenway project. You want, uh, I'm sorry, what'd you say? I can you repeat that. Uh, why is the Lady Face Greenway project called the Lady Face Greenway? <laughs> oh, I didn't touch on that. Okay. So the Lady Face Greenway project, the name it has gone through way, so many different names. You saw how long it took us to design it, right? So it started out as what we called the Palo Cabado and then the Chesbro. Um, harp um, because the storm the channel that we're covering the the um the water that goes into is from a creek it's from a river creek it's called chesbro so that's why it was called that first and then it became nobody wanted that name it was too long too boring then it became linear park because it was linear in shape still boring so we took it to our city council they're the governing board for who I work for. They're the ones that make the final decision. And they like the name Ladyface. And the reason they like the name Ladyface, and I didn't show a picture of it, is because in the city of Agora Hills, there's a mountain range that's here. It's very famous locally, and they call it the Ladyface Mountain. And because that Ladyface Mountain overlooks this project that I'm building, that's what they wanted to call it. Everybody knows it. They wanted, they wanted a a real punchy name, one that grabs people, but one that spoke locally to who our city is. Because they expect that this project is going to serve not just our residents, but people from outside of our city. So they wanted something like that, that, that gives everybody an understanding of who we are. Oh, thank you. Yeah, if that's, if that's the real thing. They wanted something not boring, like linear part, <laughs> but they wanted something relating to the city of Agora Hills. 
Great question. I didn't even think about that. That's like another part of its history. So when you work on a project that long, there's just so many avenues to it. It was hard for me to condense it into this presentation because I could have gone off in all different avenues. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering my two questions. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so we also have a question in chat that is, how does the study of math help build and design skill set? Okay, so with math, like I mentioned earlier, is just a tool. So in engineering, particularly this project, um, a lot of the basis for when we de first designed it is called um, hydraulic engineering. So it's a facet of civil, but um, so you have mathematics, which are all the formula, but you also have physics, which is the science that utilizes the mathematics. And I don't know how many are in high school right now taking physics, but you've probably heard of Bernoulli's equation. And that's the, it, it's a fundamental equation that gives us an idea of the flow through this channel and how we're dealing with this flow. So that, that, that's the basic because it, we went through the hydraulics to determine, can we cap, can we even cap this um, channel? Because if we cap it, we are now, it's not open. So do we have enough room in this channel for the water to flow through it? And remember, I told you it, it, it gets fed from a creek and river from far away. So it's coming from somewhere else. So you've got to look at that area. You, you take an area and you you compute, you, you um, mathematically determine what's the largest storm flow that can come through that area that will eventually go through this channel. Um, what I didn't really get into is going through the county, we had to go through those equations. And what it showed was we had to raise the channel walls about a foot, a foot to two feet, which is created other problems. I told you about grade differentials. It makes it higher. We didn't want it to go higher. We wanted it to stay low because it, you had existing buildings next to. So that's what we use mathematics for. You, you're looking at the first and foremost, it's a bridge that we're building over, but it's a bridge over a water facility that that treats and carries water from far away. So the mathematic tool is the equations that we use to determine what the maximum flow is, how high we have to create this um, bridge. And then the last part for the bridge is the loads that the bridge will carry. And those are all... Uh, one of the basic things for a lot of engineering is physics and physics uses a lot of mathematics. I hope that answered your question. I see that Vina is raising her hand. Okay. Vina? Uh, yeah, it's um, Starshana. Uh, how long do you think this project will take to build? Um, we are estimating about 16 to 18 months. Yeah, so, so a little over a year. Then. Oh, it'll be almost two years, probably. It, it it'll take about I would think six. My my estimate is sixteen months, but it'll take another like six months to kind of clean up everything, get the plants established. So when we finally say to the contractor, "You're done," it's probably eighteen to twenty months, something like that. So almost two years. So we're twenty twenty four. So at the beginning of twenty twenty six, if you come visit, it'll be done. I'm excited. I mean, it's. To have a project move this fast in five years, it's incredible. Um, many projects I've worked on can take up to 10 years. There was one I did in the city. It was called Agora Road Widening. It took up uh, good 10 years of my life. Yeah. And that was from the design all the way through construction and what I call the final audit phase. Because when you get funding from other agencies... That's another part of mathematics, by the way, kids. Um, you know, you have the financial parts of everything. As an engineer, I never thought I'd have to worry about the financials. But when you get um, grants, you have to keep track of all that money. You have to show your financial audits, how you spent the money. So <laughs> that's all mathematics, right? When you're dealing with finances, you've got like pluses and minuses of uh, 
what's coming in, what's coming out, showing that you're spending the money as you said you would. So, I mean, yeah. All right. But yeah, come you. visit the site in two years. It'll be, I, I'm sure we'll probably be working with the high school to give tours as it goes along. We, we like to work with our local um, schools. Hey, thank you so much. And because of time, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. I personally am very excited for this project, mainly because I live so close to it. So I can't wait to see what how it's going to look after. Thank you so much for spending the time and talking to our students about what you do and how you get about doing it. And overall, I'm just really excited. Thank you so much. And, and Siri, can I add one thing? So of course, I pick up so much time. If there are other questions, if they send it to you, I'd be happy to answer them. I can email the answers to you. And then, you know, I feel bad that I get, didn't get through all the questions. <laughs> no, you did great. Thank you so much. And to all our students, thank you so much for joining us. As you said, you're welcome to email us with questions so that we can forward. And with that, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye.